Um, as, as Mrs. Munira mentioned, I'm also an alum of INSEAD, uh, who is, I think, a, a, a partner to, to that forum. And I've uh, done some great executive education on that, um, which I can recommend to anyone in the room. Um, we've talked a lot about innovation today, and innovation, we've, we've defined what is innovation, we've seen a couple of innovative trends, we've seen many, many digital trends today. Um, we talked about what policymakers should, could, need to do to foster innovation. Um, we've spoken relatively little about how companies itself need to react um, to those trends, what they need to do to become innovative. Um, so I'm going to use my remaining six minutes on the how of the innovation side. Um, a lot of it is based on the practices that we're seeing uh, in our daily work. Um, when, when you try to be innovative, or not even innovative, but trying to bring in new, um, you have always that challenge that you need to bridge between the old. You, you have a running organization, your people are comfortable on what they're doing, they know what they're doing, and suddenly something new pops up um, that is, of course, uncomfortable. Um, and it's, it's the big unknown. Um, and successful companies are able to bridge those two elements to each other. Um, I would like to go through five points that we've seen um, in, in our daily life um, that especially from the board side, companies need to um, take into consideration um, uh, when they push for innovative growth. Um, who has innovation on the agenda? Um, to give you an example, we've worked with a company um, we, we've actually sat with them on a workshop on, on their new strategy. We've had all board members in the room. Um, we talked a lot about the digital trends out there. The, some of them are very highly relevant to their uh, specific business units. Um, and th they were happening outside the country already um, to a large extent. Competitors starting utilizing them. Um, about half of those trends that we talked about had been pushed away immediately, said, no, 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 they will come later. We don't really know when, but they're not relevant now. About the other half of the trends, this board didn't even really know about what they were. Um, so how would the organization be able to implement or look into those or identify any of the trends that are going out there in the market if it's not been driven from the top? So point number one is boards need to have innovation on the agenda. They need to talk about it every single time. They need to be informed about it. Um, and they need to drive us into the organization. Obviously, then management has to follow. So you have to have a strategy that involves that innovation. And that might mean that your, um, your existing trends may be overlaid by the new trends. So you typically have trends in any business where you have declining business, you have stable business, and you need to be able to make sure you have the growing business on the agenda in your strategic plan, in your strategy, um, and especially on the financial side. And then, of course, the business unit leadership um, need to embrace the topic as well. They will be the ones that are scouting the market. They will be ones that give technical opinion on it. Um, if they don't embrace innovation and have it on the agenda, uh, very little will happen in the organization. They will block off every single new idea that comes through. Point number two is, we've heard that this morning in the Singaporean discussion, innovation is massively costly. And innovation expenses, anything that you put into innovation today, doesn't necessarily generate income tomorrow or even the day after tomorrow. It might be a very, very long time frame. Um, and obviously, your financials need to support that, but you also need to, be, need to understand um, that your company needs to have excess funds that go into building a business development team, that go into scouting the market, that go into failure. Some of those initiatives that you try will probably not lead to good results. So you need to make sure that you have um, sufficient funds available in your budget. However, my personal view is, if you're not spending, it's likely going to be more expensive later on. So you need to be very aware of that. Um, typically, organizations are very good or are reasonably good in, in doing what they're doing. 
And that means over a period of 5, 10, 20 years, they keep doing what they're doing. However, typically the core, and with core I mean the backbone, not necessarily the front products, but the backbone of the organization, your supply chain, um, your HR department, your finance department, um, they need to adapt to new ways of doing business. Um, there's, a, there's been a lot of talk today about automation, for example. There's massive innovation ongoing on the automation, automation side of things, which have nothing to do with your products that you're selling, but has a lot to do with how you're doing your work. Um, just to give you an example, we've, we're working with, with a company now that um, has realized a good opportunity in the market to grow. Um, and then they started looking at how would they do it, and they realized that basically all of their backbone functions haven't been upgraded for the last 10 years. So they've been operating on outdated systems, which worked, but they're not able to scale. So if they suddenly push through the double, the triple, the quadruple amount of revenue through those systems, they will entirely collapse. Um, and we're spending, a, it's very costly for them at the moment. Uh, it's basically now in a rush to update those systems. Um, and another point here is um, we work mostly with, with mid-sized companies, but we also work with uh, startups. And, and the startups colleague here on the panel will probably um, relate to that. Um, startups need to connect or need to be able to connect to big organization. That's a huge challenging growth factor for startups. But that also means that the big organization need to let startups into the organization. And that need, means they need to change their processes. The mindset of innovation, I'm finishing now. Mindset of innovation, whoever was in Anand's workshop earlier will know what I'm talking about. Um, you need to be open to innovation, and then you need to be able to have the skill set in the organization that allows the new normal to happen. And here I can highly recommend to the existing educators in the room to not only talk about MBA students or student development, but also executive education because a lot of senior managers don't upgrade their skills on an ongoing basis, and that is, will hit them when, when, it, when you talk about innovation. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.